Awesome, we are live. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm super excited about our chat today. I have with me Phil Green. He is trademark counsel for the Marine Corps and he's going to be providing some wisdom that I have very little background in and so I'm going to be asking questions just like you are. Phil, why don't you give us a little bit of background about yourself and then we have a little bit of a PowerPoint um, that I will pull up once he's done. Phil? Okay. Oh, shoot. The Marine Corps. Um, my office is at the Pentagon. I've been there for a little over 11 years. Um, prior to that, I taught internet law in Wellington, New Zealand in 2007, which was a lot of fun. Um, and I was the trademark counsel, intellectual property counsel for the Commerce Department, which includes NOAA, the National Weather Service, a bunch of other agencies, Census Bureau. Um, from 1988 to 2009, um, I came over to the, to the Marine Corps in 2009. Um, if the way trademarks work, you, you have some brands that are very loyalty based brands. Like if you are a fan of the New York Yankees or the Dallas Cowboys or, you know, something like that, you wear the gear, you wear, a, you know, a hat that says, you know, Washington nationals or has the curly W logo, or, you know, you might wear a Jersey of, uh, you know, Notre Dame or something like that. Well, the military um, has brands very similar that that you know people wear because they show their pride in in the service. Um, in 2004, Congress did a very smart thing. I think they they gave each branch the authority to license their trademarks, just the way Notre Dame, you know, Dallas Cowboy, the NFL, Major League Baseball, um, the way other brand owners do, Disney, for example, and. So in the mid to late 2000s, each branch stood up their own um, trademark licensing office. So the Marine Corps Trademark Licensing Office has been operating to, since 2009. We're the smallest of the four military branches, Army, Navy, um, Air Force, Marines. We're actually a, a component of the, of the Navy. But we have, in my mind, the most successful trademark licensing program. When I got there uh, 11 years ago, the Marine Corps owned six trademarks. One of them was the Marine Corps Marathon. And we had a handful of other trademarks. We now have 668 registered trademarks. We've licensed the, the, the trademarks or most of the trademarks to several hundred companies. So many of them are veteran owned um, to make and sell merchandise. I, I should have one here, you know, like a Marine Corps hat, t-shirt, coffee cup. You know, you can, you can deck out your barbecue. You can get a grill cover uh, for your barbecue, you know, utensils, golf club head covers, a whole range of, of, of merchandise. We don't license services though. So if you wanted to start a plumbing company and call it Marine Corps Plumbing Company, you, you can't do that. And that's part of what I'll talk about today. Now, the, the royalty revenue, because these are all royalty, very low royalty rate, but we earn several million dollars a year in royalties, um, usually something like $7 million. And it covers the costs of our office, the staff, you know, the, um, the cost of filing trademark applications, but every year we turn over two or $3 million to uh, what's called MWR, Morale, Welfare and Recreation Activities um, that, that help Marine Corps personnel. Um, so we're able to give back um, to the two Marines and we're very proud of that because um, yeah, every year it's several million dollars. So, um, so that's what we do. We, you know, in in doing this, we have to protect the brand against unauthorized use. If it's a bogus charity, if it's a company, and unfortunately, sometimes it's a Marine-owned company, and the Marine has, as you'll see in my PowerPoint, the Marine wants to show off that he or she, you know, was in the Marine Corps. And we have a slogan: "Once a Marine, always a Marine." You're always a Marine, even if you served ten years ago. You're still a Marine, um, but we don't necessarily want the Marine making the Marine Corps brand part of their brand. And I'll talk about ways in which they can tell the world, I'm a Marine, I serve, you know, two tours of duty in Afghanistan, something like that, without, without causing problems for the Marine Corps with respect to our protection of the brand. So um, we can go to the PowerPoint now, or we could start with Q&A, whatever you, you'd like to do. Awesome. Well, thanks for your introduction. Um, I will just open it up. If you have questions, drop them in the comments. Let us know you have questions. 
and then at tag one of our names. That way we can see your question um, and we'll do our best to address it during the live chat or after if it if it's after we're finished today. Uh, what I'm going to do next is share um, a screen that way you can see his slides and that will take me just one second here. Hold on. And we should do this and let me put this on display. All right. This is not correct. Hold on. Whoop. Can you see? There it goes. Yeah. That's better. All right. Awesome. And that's my email address if you all want to jot it down. If you ever have questions or something like that, you can feel free to contact me. Um, we can go to the first slide if you'd like. All right, so you often see, if you're watching television, you'll see a commercial with somebody in the military. And, you know, we sometimes have to monitor this space to make sure that it's, it's not the official uniform um, because we don't want to create the appearance that Marine Corps endorses the, the company using the, um, using the uniform. You know, we do want, it's obvious they want to convey the idea that members of the service, you know, people in uniform should be thinking about using our banking services or our life insurance services or that sort of thing. We just don't want it to, to, um, to, to be sort of a coattail riding on our brand. So the next slide, you'll see examples um, and this is consistent with the way you know, other brand owners, you know, would, would look at things. There's Aaron Rodgers wearing a State Farm uniform. He's not wearing his Green Bay Packers uniform. Tom Brady's in street clothes. LeBron James is in street clothes. If they would be in their team uniforms, you know, the Buccaneers or the Patriots or the Lakers, um, you'd need permission from those those teams or those leagues. And that's that's the same same way we – that's the same approach um, – Obviously, we know that Patrick Mahomes and and um, Rogers are both football players, but you don't have to see them in their Kansas City Chiefs Green Bay Packers uniform to understand that this is a football game. And I don't even remember the, the commercial, but you get the point. So in the next slide, we'll see examples of uh, USAA um, is, is very successful at, at conveying the idea of military. Now, if you're in the military, you know that's an Air Force uniform. Um, but Notice you don't see on the cover of the hat, you don't see the insignia, you don't see the insignia on the, on the collar. Any Marine could tell you that the video on the right, this is for a hotel chain, that's a Marine Corps, um, the, the Marine Corps pattern is called the MARPAT. Um, that's no longer in use, that's the desert pattern. But we're okay with that because even though we know that's the Marine Corps uniform, it's not in your face, it doesn't say Marines on it. As the next slide, will show you areas where mm. you're not going to be happy about this company using our official uniform because the Eagle Open Anchor is is, on, is visible on the collar and most people also on the belt buckle. That's the Eagle Open Anchor. Um, this is a distinctive uniform to the Marine Corps, and it looks like the Marine Corps is endorsing or sponsoring or, you know, we're, we're behind Mission Barbecue. Now, if they're doing great things for the military, that's great, but please don't use our official uniform. And there's a credit union that's doing the same thing where, you know, there's the Eagle Open Anchor on the cover of the hat. Next slide. Mm -hmm. you. Um, now, this is where this is where Marines can get themselves into trouble. Um, in addition to we don't want it to look like the Marine Corps endorses um, U-Haul, you know, the provider, the you know, the provider of this U-Haul rental van. Or this was a soap. And this 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 is an active duty Marine. These are both active duty Marines. He's selling uh, a brand of soap. I won't mention the name to give them free advertising. But if you're on duty and you're endorsing a product or a service, you can run afoul of what's called the joint ethics regulation. So mm -hmm. not just am I annoyed from a trademark owner's perspective that they're using our brand to enhance their brand, they could be getting our Marines in trouble. Next slide. Um, so yeah, Marines should not make commercial use of, of Marine Corps trademarks and should not try to register trademarks based on Marine Corps trademarks. And unfortunately, probably the worst part of my job, I have to step in when I see this. And, and I, I, I see it many times, like 10 times a year, I'll have to block a trademark application 
next slide because of um, like the one front and center, Marine Movers. This company is based in Dallas, Fort Worth, and they're trying to register Marine Movers as a trademark, and they're using the Globe and Anchor on the side of their truck. And it just breaks my heart because I'm going to have to now, you know, pick a fight with this guy because he's using this brand. And Marines are so proud of their service, and they should be. They want to call their company Semper Fi Security and have a modified Eagle Open Anchor or um, Semper Fidelis Garage Door. You know, there's the Eagle Open Anchor. Leather, uh, Roughneck Pest Control has an Eagle Open Anchor. Semper Fi Towing. Um, you know, there there's a law firm here. There are ways of showing, telling the world that you're a Marine. You definitely should tell them the world you're a Marine, but don't. <laughs> now, the emblem is not part of the severance package when you when you leave. Um, um, now, there are there are marks in our portfolio that we understand we don't exclusively own. I grew up as a kid eating devil dogs. A devil dog is a nickname for a Marine. It comes from World War One. And when I was a kid eating Drake's devil dogs, I had no idea that devil dogs was also um, a snack cake. And it's called devil dogs because they're made with devil's food cake. Who knew? Mm -hmm. uh, a jewelry company called Semper Fi um, Jewelry. Semper Fi Diamonds, excuse me. And their whole, you know, their whole um, marketing idea is that the fidelity, Semper Fidelis, always faithful. Um, this engagement ring is my way of saying to you that I'm always going to be faithful to you. So um, where there's no coattail riding, where there's no, you know, branding that's pointing toward our brand, we, we don't care. We look the other way. So the next slide. Um, and there's a there's a difference between personal use of a trademark and and commercial use of a trademark. If I was in the Marine Corps, I might have an Eagle Globe and Anchor tattoo on my arm, or I might have an Eagle Globe and Anchor sticker on the back of my car, and those things are fine. Um, I have a sailboat, um, but let's say I named my sailboat Margaritaville because I'm a big Jimmy Buffett fan. That's a personal expression, and Jimmy Buffett would probably be tickled pink that. Somebody owns a boat called Margaritaville, but you can't open a restaurant called Margaritaville. You can't have a company called Semper Fi Window Washing and have uh, the Semper Fi logo and the Eagle of an Anchor on your, your uniform. So that's where people in the service need to understand you can make a, a personal use of a, of a trademark representing your brand, but not a commercial use. So the next slide, um, I, you know, I, I have to run into... I have to file letters of protest against pending trademark applications. The, the one in the center was a fitness center that a Marine started. You know, he's modified the Eagle Globe and Anchor to have some physical fitness equipment. The one on the bottom left is a, um, a Marine veteran organization in Alabama, and that's the state of Alabama in place of the Globe. Um, on top right is a, is a gymnasium owned by a, a active duty Marine in Okinawa and he's taken liberties to show the, you know, the eagle is ripped. You know, he's a bodybuilding eagle, eagle anchor. So again, these are things um, I will have to, to, you know, file what's called a letter of protest with the trademark office to to express our concerns about these pending trademark applications because they're going to harm our trademark rights and also create the appearance of endorsement or affiliation. So next slide, please. Um, Marines should also not use Marine Corps insignia in, in the political arena. If they're, if they're running for office, absolutely tell the world you're a Marine, you, you serve, you know, but, but don't, that does not give you a, the ability to, or the, uh, you know, authority to use the Eagle Open Anchor or the Marine Corps emblem um, on your campaign materials. So just please refrain from doing that. On your website, if, if you have a About Me page, maybe you have a picture of yourself in uniform there, it's more subtle. It's more informational <clears throat> rather than being the centerpiece of your campaign. Okay, the next slide. Um, and yeah, this is, the, we, we don't wanna see Facebook pages that look like official presences. Um, you know, is this an official Marine Corps presence or is this a, a group of supporters, family members, uh, wives, husbands, spouses, etc.? The next slide is an example of, you know, I'm a member of this Facebook page, Die Hard Nationals fans. It's not called the Washington Nationals fan club page because that might suggest um, it's it's official. It's the official you know presence of the Washington Nationals. So 
come up with a naming of it that makes it clear what you what you're doing without without causing confusion or deceptiveness that sort of thing next slide please um and you know we ask that if you're buying you know clothing apparel any kind of merchandise try to get it from licensed vendors you know because it helps protect the brand of the navy of the air force of the army of the marine corps to be buying only licensed stuff and it's the same you know moral struggle if you go to a baseball game yeah, you're going to pay $25 for a hat inside the ballpark when you come outside at these guys selling the knockoffs for five bucks or something like that. You know, try to buy the licensed stuff. Um, next next slide. Um, and there, there's plenty of information on the, the DOD's, you know, the DOD has a, a licensing guide um, at that link. There's a lot of FAQs and information there. The next slide I talk about... Um, Oh, and, you know, there are a lot of companies out there that will use Indicia, um, they'll, you know, they'll name their product in a military way. But as long as it's it's clear that it's, you know, they're not ripping off the brand. Um, now, the top right, it says once a Marine, always a Marine veteran. This is a logo we've created for Marines to use on their website or, you know, wherever they want to, to people I'm a Marine without using the Eagle Open Anchor. Um, or they might use the one in the bottom center because it, it, it says veteran and, it, and it's conveying, this is not from the Marine Corps, this is from a Marine Corps veteran. And we're okay with that. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. Okay, now there are a lot of charities out there. Some of them have innocuous names like Socks for Truth or Wounded Warrior Project. You know, they don't really um, tie themselves to a particular branch, but on the other hand, as the next slide shows, you have of a lot of nonprofits. Um, okay, so sorry, I got ahead of myself. This is guidance about um, the DOD's use of D DOD guidance on how you can use and how you shouldn't use um, the insignia and service medals and things like that. The long link, but if you Google um, DOD guidelines, military emblems, or something like that, you'll find it pretty quickly. Um, next slide, please. Okay. So within that guidance, um, you know, you see you see a lot of a lot of foundations, nonprofits that have the name of the branch or the emblem of the branch. You know, the SEAL Foundation, the Marine Corps Law Enforcement Foundation, the Marine Raider Foundation. And if you don't know anything about the organization, you might think, well, they're called the Marine Corps Scholarship Foundation. They must be affiliated with the Marine Corps. Well, they're not, but. Um, I'm not throwing them under the bus or anything. They're, they've been around so long, they're kind of grandfathered in, you know, a lot of these organizations. Now, in a perfect world, if I've been on the job since 1775, um, I would not have encouraged this sort of thing. Charities calling themselves Marine Corps this or Navy that. But so prospectively, we discourage nonprofits from using our name and our emblem. Um, and the ones that are already in existence, we sort of tolerate, but we make sure they understand that um, I'm doing a PowerPoint right now. I'll call you back. Um, they understand they have to have a disclaimer and they can apply to register trademarks based that include our trademarks. So next slide, please. Um, and this is sort of a, the, the poster child for what can go wrong in this space. The United States Navy Veterans Association was completely fraudulent, $100 million raised by this character who's now in jail. Um, and, you know, it, like, like any nonprofit that uses the name of the, of the branch, um, it's a slippery slope. It's, it's something the branch has to be wary of and make sure there's not fraud and, you know, um, abuse going on. Next slide. Um, so how to avoid coattail riding, use words, not emblems. You know, you can certainly say retired Navy veteran or retired Marine Corps gunnery sergeant, that sort of thing. Um, use the logos that I was mentioning. Um, you can't, you can't just make a, a variation to the official emblem and think that it's okay. Well, you can think it's okay. It's not okay. Um, you know, we see things like Semper Fo for, you know, Asian food or Semper Pi. You know, if you're going to do something like that, just make sure there's no 
Marine Corps overt Marine Corps theme to the branding, or if you're, you know, if you're if you're riffing off of a Navy or an Air Force logo or, or sorry, slogan, that sort of thing, term. Uh, again, you know, have make make sure that it that it's not it's not obviously pointing to that branch. Um, next slide. Um, and before you launch your own company name, and I'm sure I'll get a lot of questions about this, just sort of practical considerations. You want to do a trademark search before you spend a lot of money in in a brand in, in a company name. Um, you want to make sure that six months from now you don't get a cease and desist from somebody that's already using that exact name or that exact lo or a very similar logo. Um, so do a trademark search. You know, spend a few hundred bucks or, or more to get a trademark search done. Have a trademark lawyer look at it. Uh, Legal Zoom is not the best thing in the world for these sorts of things because they, in my opinion, don't do the, the due diligence that they should. Um, but um, um, you know, think it before you embark on a company name, branding uh, strategy, that sort of thing. Uh, next slide, I think is yeah. Um, so any questions you all have, I'm more than happy to. Uh, to open the floor up to discussion. Awesome. I'm going to stop sharing the screen and put us both up here. There we go. All right. I think I look frozen and that's okay. Um, I am going to check and see if we got any comments while you were talking, Okay. but I had a question anyways. So um, thinking about, you know, a small business, a lot of us are starting up and maybe don't have a lot of money to invest in trademarking and even protecting our brand at all. What would your two cents be on um, on making this investment for a small business? Um, if you have no budget for for doing a legal, you know, trademark search, I would just spend a few hours on Google. You know, like googling a name, googling the name of your company or you know your prospective name, and and also you know very variations in the spelling, that sort of thing, um, just to see what's out there because and. and you, it's also, it's not that difficult to, to do a trademark search using USPTO.gov. Uh, it's the United States Patent and Trademark Office, USPTO.gov. There's something called the TESS Trademark Examination, Trademark Electronic Search System or something like that. And you can do a search for um, a name that you're thinking of doing or even a logo. It takes a, it's a little bit of a, a skill, but... Um, you can you can look to see if anyone has applied to register a name or initials or something like that that you're thinking of using. But Google's a very good way of doing it. You can find out someone's already come up with a, that name, but maybe they're located in Seattle and you're in Miami, and it's a local type restaurant thing where you could peacefully coexist. But um, yeah, if you're on a shoestring, just just use the tools available on the internet to see um, if if there's a similar name already in existence. Awesome. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm having, um, my screen isn't working, so I don't know if you guys can see me or not, but hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> yeah. um, so if you're a small business and you're intimidated by this process, what kind of tips might you have about getting your foot in the door and get, dipping a toe in the water and kind of getting started? Which process? The Just registering to protect your brand, your intellectual property. Uh -huh. If if you're if you're if you're the owner of the business, you can file your own trademark application. It's, um, but the unfortunate thing is, if you make a mistake, some mistakes aren't fixable. Like if um, if someone re apply to register a trademark that I think is is based on the Eagle Open Anchor, you can't amend it after you file. You can't fix the mistake afterwards. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of um, Law schools have law clinics where they offer pro bono legal services to to, um, to small businesses, that sort of things, bar associations. You know, you might be able to get some pro bono assistance and maybe, you know, it's, it's a good PR move for the law firm or, or sole practitioner because if they help a startup get started and, you know, at, 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 at no cost, Eventually, they're going to have real needs, and they're going to have a budget, and maybe they'll come back to you and make it worth your while, um, you know, a few years earlier. So check with bar associations for pro bono services. Um, 
you know, there's an old saying, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Um, you know, people who try to register their own trademarks and not knowing what they're doing are, are often going to be wasting their money because um, of, of the, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the things that you, sh you need to know about how a trademark application is filed, even though you can do it yourself, um, it's, it's better to have somebody who knows what they're doing help you. So. Um, and are there any available resources that you recommend doing your research on outside of maybe just Google search? Um, mm, uh, let's see. I mean, there are, you, you could probably find a lot of blogs written by attorneys or people, you know, in, in the branding world, um, you know, newsletters and, and DIY types of sites for, for small business owners when it comes to all things trademark. I, I'm not, I don't, I wouldn't want to, yeah, I'm, I don't even know if I'm aware of any of the names and I'd be reluctant to suggest any because, you know, in government, we're not supposed to endorse the goods and services of, of others. But um, I would think there, there are some, some DIY, DIY types of websites and blogs and things like that, that can help a, a brand owner in, in launching a brand. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Um, if you are watching these questions later, drop in the comments and ask, and I will make sure Phil gets them and is able to answer your question as best as possible. And I just want to thank you again for your time and for your wisdom and expertise today, Phil. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Have a good one, everyone.